Right, sorry, not going to do the mute thing today. Translating between words and inequalities. Okay, so we're going to do some reading math today. Math is a foreign language, so we have to do some translating. Righty. And inequalities is when sometimes things are equal to a number, and then sometimes they might be greater or less than or not even equal to something. We'll eventually be drawing pictures for this, and so uh, this is a good start. If we get a word problem that says, man, I need to, I need to work at least this many hours in order to get the money that, uh, that I need to buy my new Lamborghini or my new Tesla, um, I might just draw it out in uh, in math terms. Be a good way to plug it into a spreadsheet or or into something that you're trying to plan out, and they can split it up for you. And so let's just start with some stuff that you can write down in your notebook that you can go back and look at if you get stuck on uh, on what some of these things mean. Uh, I'm gonna start with this: that typically I'm gonna want the value x, the mystery thing, to be on the left side of uh, the inequality. These are all inequalities. They're all things that are not just equal to some other value. So like, let's just pick the number two, okay? And just like we've been talking about before and when we do mental math, we wanna do as much of that from left to right as possible, the same way that we read a sentence. So this expression here means that x is less than Two, okay. X is less than two. So what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna put want to put in the translation here. X less than, and I just picked a number, but it could be any number, some number. N. Let's just call it n from now, for right now. X less than some number n. This one here means greater than. And I think you've heard before about like this like alligator and he wants to eat big things, so he's pointing that direction. Um, it's going to end up being really handy for us to put the x on this side. This will help us draw our picture when we get there. This would mean less than or equal to. But definitely or, not and. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, this one, x, would be greater than or equal to. And the last one is x is not equal to. It might be less than, it might be greater than, but it's definitely not that value that you've plugged in. So definitely this better be in your notebook. Hit pause right now. Okay, it's not hard. Go back to 10 seconds, write it down. But there you go, that's how we're gonna begin by translating these word problems with inequalities into mathematical expressions that we can then eventually that we'll evaluate or simplify. I'm gonna clear the board and then we'll move on to some of the examples. Okay, here's our first one. Job here is to translate. That means we're gonna turn it in into math, okay? Just some symbols and numbers and letters and stuff. And what I typically do starting off for these things, got to write the whole thing out and then we're going to circle stuff. We're going to try to dice this sentence up like we're doing um, diagramming sentences. Kind of very, very much the same idea here with math. Find out what pieces here mean what. We got to get to the meaning of these things. So we start off with this first word here, quotient. And we gotta go back up some lessons and we can say, well, what's, what's a quotient? Well, quotient is the answer to a division problem. So right away, I'm gonna just start putting in, what are some of the symbols that are gonna get used? Quotient means there's gonna be division. And then we have of a number, but not just a number, a number and two. So there we go. A number and two is something, and I might translate that as, n or x, whatever I want, and it's uh, a quotient. So a number and two, 
the quotient of a number and 2. That would be n divided by 2. Okay. We got the word here is from a previous lesson. We said that is means equals. And then here's one of our inequality expressions. Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. So we've got we've got some number. Let's call it. Oh, I guess we call it n, right? Quotient of a number and two, n over two, is equal to something that's less than or equal to. So we got less than or equal to. And then there's our there's our thing that we're looking for, our value, 6. So there we go. Just start dicing up into pieces. Find the pieces that go together. Quotient says division, fraction, okay? A number and 2. Okay, there's our quotient, n over 2. And then uh, our inequality less than or equal to, and 6. So once we get here, then we can go ahead and do the math on it if we wanted to. Right now, I think they're just asking you to be able to write it. But if I want to know what that number is, I got to get this 2 to the other side. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That number has to be less than or equal to 12 for this to be true. Okay, so there's a, kind of one tip for, for reading math. Let me pop another one up on the screen and we'll work that one out too. Okay, here comes one where we're going to start with the symbols, and we're going to turn that into a sentence. And unfortunately, they decided to write this one. It kind of looks backwards, okay, because they put the X over, over on the, the right side rather than on the left side. So uh, if you want to on these, you can just start off by taking the whole thing and, and flip it around. So an equivalent expression to this would be taking this stuff and putting it over here. That means the symbol has to flip around as well. Has to be pointed. Uh, oops, that's the same thing. Pointed in the opposite direction. Six. So I just took the whole thing and flipped it around so that the x was over there on on that side. And I get a, an equivalent expression. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna translate both of these. Okay. And one key and and, and listen to this. Escuchen por favor. Is that you're gonna want to translate one side at a time. Like everything on the left, say what the inequality is, and then say everything that's on the right. Okay? Sometimes people, it gets kind of clunky if you don't consider the left side and the right side um, separately, but as a whole chunk, the right side being a whole chunk. Okay, so this first one, we would just say 6. And then what's this right here? All right? 6 is greater than, and then we want to look at this as one big chunk. How do we express that? We're not going to say it's greater than x add 8. That sounds clunky. That's like robot talk. It's like Google Translate. We want to say what, what's going on over here. Well, we've got, got a sum. Got a sum. This whole expression over here on the right is the sum of a number and eight. Now it'd be the most uh, nice off the tongue kind of way of expressing it. Is greater than the sum of a number and eight. Or of x and eight. Or X and 8 added together. You can say it in lots of different ways. But to me, that's the best way. Look for that operation and say, well, that's what ties those things together. Let's talk about what we're looking for. And the last one said quotient. That meant a fraction. Okay? So we're going to look for, for uh, like the, uh, the answer to, uh, to a problem. And that would be sum. So if we want to turn that around, we would still treat this whole side as one thing. And we just start this way. We'd say the sum of a number and eight. Now and tells me that it's, it's it's a sum. Now now the symbol is is less than. And then we can say the word 
6. The sum of a number in 8 is less than 6. So you need to be able to read this. Then, and don't go parentheses x plus sign 8 parentheses uh, less than 6. You don't want to say it like that. You want to be able to read it fluently and, uh, and say the sum of a number in 8 is less than 6. You want to be able to read it and say it. That's what you do when you learn a foreign language. You're, you're doing the stuff in your head and you're not kind of like, you're not saying everything that's there. You're translating it and so that it, that it makes sense. Um, that's pretty much it. I got one more thing for you just to kind of help you think through a problem as to what you would do so you can determine um, which inequality you can use. So I'll clear the board again and then we'll finish up with one more thing. Okay, I got myself a chart here. Oh, I'm a hand model. Where I'm just going to change this little expression right here and we're going to evaluate uh, 2. We're going to evaluate the expression uh, x is blah, 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 2. And then write the inequality that, that fits. Okay, so that's our little game today. Take a moment to look at that. X is at most 2. And then uh, give ourselves some conditions to think about. We're just going to answer yes or no in the boxes down here. So the expression x is at most 2. Now I got 2 in there, and I got 1 below 2, 1 above 2, so that we can think about if it's less than, equal to, greater than, those kind of things. The expression x is at most 2. Can x be 1? Yes or no? Say it. Yes. Yes. Yes? X is at most 2? Yeah, okay. Greatest that X can be is 2. Uh, can it be 2? Yeah. Can it be 3? No. No, it can't. Uh, X can be at most 2, so 3 is too big. That one is a yes, yes, no. Now hang on, let me switch that thing and we'll ask ourselves the questions again. Okay, one thing I forgot to do there was was to like express that then as an inequality. And there, there it is. X is at most, so it can be 2, and it can be less than 2, and that's the way that we write that. The second one that I put in there is X, X is less than 2. Now let's ask ourselves the questions again. If X is less than 2, can it be 1? Yes, 1 is less than 2. Can x be 2? No, because 2 is not less than 2. It is 2. How about 3? Can x be, uh, x be 3 if x is less than 2? And that is a no as well. Now, how do you think that one ought to be written? x is less than 2. Okay, hey, here comes the next one. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Switched it already. Okay, this time it's x is at least two. X is at least two. Can x be one? Is one at least two? No. Is two at least two? Yes. Yes, it is. And is three at least two? Uh huh. Yep. So. How would we write that inequality? X is at least, so it can be two equals, and it could be greater than two. There we go. And uh, if you knew process of elimination, you can think of what maybe the last one might be. Ha! <laughs> we'll see. Ha! <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be a mocker, but you know. <laughs> All righty. X is more than two. There's our last one. X is more than 2. Can X be 1? Is 1 more than 2? No. 2 more than 2? No. Can't be more than itself. And is 2 as 3 more than 2? That would be a yes. So inequality there on this one would be X is more than 2. Got that? Great. If not, go back and watch that again. Peace be unto you.